so right now, as I've been promising, this is the Missouri case. It's a case of a very uh, serious serial killer in that area. His name was Mark Wesson. He ended up being a cannibal. Um, he would kill child victims, and there's some of them he would actually eat, and so on. He'd lure them in with gifts, promises, and even food. So this is an important case. Make sure to get the word out there and spread it far and wide. Thank you. So, this is an important case. It's just a brief case on um, who I've been talking about, the Missouri case of Mark uh, Wesson. Essentially, Wesson killed nine children. Apparently, some of them were his own children in this particular case. He lived near a interesting part of uh, town where the kings used to live. He lured some of his child victims in with special gifts, food, and so forth. And he was very, very wicked. This man, Mr. Wesson, was a cannibal. That's correct. So we're going to be covering this just a little bit, not for long. But this is a case, Mr. Mark Wesson. On March 12, 2004, a monster would emerge from the shadows, a self-proclaimed vampire god, clothing soaked with blood. But who was he, and what events led to the massacre? The answer you receive when posing this question depends greatly on who you ask. One of Wesson's sisters sees the young boy who loved animals, and she felt that a natural gift for healing. Their mother related a story as well, and she told her son a dog was caring for, that he cared for wouldn't survive. Wesson appeared to be intuitive of what to know. I mean, what he needed to do to make sure the animal was brought back from death. Wesson's children all say he was a loving father, involved in every aspect of life. In contrast, police and prosecutors will more than likely tell you that Wesson is evil incarnate. Any love that Marcus Wesson bestowed upon his own kids was tainted by perversions, including cannibalism. I mean, this guy, when you learn the full story about him, he was just beyond unbelievable. How then did the Wessons, the Wesson accused of these horrific atrocities develop from the kind, nurturing young man his sibling and mother remember? Let's begin with some background. Born Marcus Dillon Wesson on August 22, 1946 in Kansas, before he moved to Missouri, he was reportedly a violent and abusive alcoholic, his father Benjamin, and Carrie, his mother, was a religious fanatic belonging to a cult. Wesson stated that Jesus was a vampire and proclaimed himself to be Jesus and at other times God. Wesson declared himself a vampire God and although he could twist the scriptures in Bibles to reflect his teachings, before long he was writing all of his own versions of different religious beliefs. His favorite game to play as a child was a preacher leading his flock where he could be the center of attention. That childhood game never stopped for Marcus Wesson. It grew more bizarre instead. The Seventh-day Adventist beliefs he had been raised upon would be combined with Wesson's personal beliefs and also his cannibalism desires, including polygamy and incest. He believed that he and his family were vampires, but different because they had souls, whereas vampires were prevented from moving around in the daytime. Wesson was an unimpressive student, not even earning enough credits to graduate from high school. Wesson was quiet, often fading in the background. Similarly, childhood acquaintances say he never showed himself to be pressured by classmates to try anything new, including alcohol. Despite Wesson's size, he was usually more inclined to be bullied rather than bully anyone himself. It was apparent his peers recalled that his appearance, nor his academics, made him stand out at all. While other students dressed in jeans and t-shirts, Wesson wore dress pants and button-up shirts with a tie all the time, but no one, not even his mother, could see any resemblance between the quiet young man with the crew cut who loved electric trains to a 300-pound dreadlocked monster the world is introduced to in the year 2004. Could it be true that the man who was once an orderly and ambulance driver as well in the army 
might be guilty of multiple murders that he stood charged with? Marcus D. wasn't. He turned his family into an incest really, really lead. He died. Cult. And then Marcus Wesson killed nine of the children involved. Whatever happened in the home was by agreement. It was March 12, 2004. The day changed everything for a small community in Fresno. They demanded their children be released to them after stopping by the house. An enormous man that was over six feet tall tried to calm the pair of anxious mothers. The neighbors called the police after witnessing the commotion. However, the foreboding man with dreadlocks walked back into the house and locked the door. The police demanded he unlock the door, but he did not. And then a series of gunshots went off. The police were in for a grisly scene as they witnessed nine corpses stacked in the back of the bedroom in Fresno. Seven of the nine victims were all under the age of 12. The other two victims were 17-year-old Elizabeth Brianna Kino Wesson and 25-year-old Sabrina ha April Wesson. Unrelated. Seven of the nine children. The mothers that desperately called for their children on that day were Safina Solorio and Ruby Ortiz. The man with dreadlocks was none other than Marcus D. Wesson. He believed he was going to heaven and that this would be his last sacrifice by drinking blood for immortality, he said. He claimed that the funeral items were used for wood in his beds. The Wesson family home had become infamous in Fresno as the disturbing nature of their history had been revealed. The family patriarch, Marcus, was the father of over 18 involved. He maintained an incestuous relationship with his daughter, Kiani and Sabrina, and his niece, Rosa and Sofina Saloro and Ruby Ortiz. Wesson privately married two of his daughters and three of his nieces and produced children with all of them. So he was into incest and he was a cannibal and he was a supporter of the Branch Davidians and David Koresh. That's why this whole case is so important. The family that was there originally came from Waco, Texas. So he killed these people in Texas and from Texas, and he also killed them in Fresno. And he is one of the worst serial killers in Missouri's history. Marcus Wesson's daughter, Kiani Wesson, and Rosa Solorio insisted the women in the household were happy. I belonged to him, and I was his. By the age of 14, Elizabeth was pregnant. By the age of 26, she had given birth to 11 children. Wesson's sons had completely different experiences than the daughters, as they claimed that their father raised them as Seventh-day Adventists. It had been the best deal they ever got. He looks really dangerous, but he's a great guy. The Wesson sons were raised away from their sisters, as contact between the sexes was always discouraged. As a result, the males of the Wesson clan knew nothing about the others. On that fateful day when Sofina Saloria and Ruby Ortiz came to knock at the door, they had heard that Marcus D. Wesson was about to move. And so he went out and tore everything apart with a hail of gunfire. In the ensuing trial that followed, Marcus Wesson had been sentenced to a death penalty, and he resides in San Quentin State Prison. So there were also a lot of allegations of Cannibalism, like that he would actually eat. Not his own kids, but other victims. And uh, some of those were proven later. So, a horrific case. and Very, very short-lived um, here. But um, I encourage everyone to get the word out about this one. Because not that many know about the case of Marcus D. Wesson. And he definitely was one of Missouri's worst killers. Thank you again. Like, spread the word, and subscribe. And 
she also said she never suspected Wesson was the father of her daughters and nieces' children. She never asked who the father was. Is it possible that over a decade of incest resulting in multiple children could go on under the same roof without anyone else knowing? If you believe Elizabeth's story, and even some of her sons, the answer is yes. It is difficult to imagine that in small spaces the large family occupied, secrets that dark could be kept for decades. Events in the 20th century will teach us that when family members are under a strong psychological hold as seen within the family, such as Manson's, the Branch Davidians and members of Jonestown as well, perhaps it is a self-survival technique to believe and do what you're told. When we read about criminals, we do not merely want the gory details, but we long to understand their rationale. If we could get inside the mind of this criminal, Marcus D. Wesson, we might be able to decipher what, were, what actually went wrong with everything. Many people have built careers attempting to understand the criminal mind, and yet all too often we are left with far more questions than answers. Marcus Wesson was discharged from the Army in 1968 with a married woman, Rosemary Metterina. Nearly a decade and a half older, Rosemary already had all of these children that he wanted nothing to do with. Wesson might have been happy with the new role of pseudo-papa, but instead he was far happier engaging in incest. So, already it was doomed from the start, the way he chose somebody who was more than, I don't remember what the trial court said, but he was at least 20 years older than him, you know, a lot older than Marcus Wesson was. And he was a part of a, kind of a cult. When you think about the church group he belonged to, it was not a good group at all. Very strong links to, you know, the very, very negative Seventh-day Adventist groups and things like that. Clearly, Marcus Wesson had issues, but there is no proof from anyone, that, uh, including child or family services, having ever investigated his environment. They were intentionally kept segregated from the outside world by the father. He knew the world would not accept his philosophies. Only after their death in 2004 would DNA testing provide proof that Marcus Wesson had fathered many more children with other parents. So he was one of the biggest followers of David Koresh. That's correct. And that's why, you know, we're doing this kind of deep dive part here in the middle. Is I want people to know, you know, this is what the Branch Davidians considered their own religion. They believed in incest. They believed in forced subjugation of both the girls and boys. They believed in these kind of the house of plantation slavery mentality. People don't think that this sort of thing went on, but this went on all the time in these households, such as the Marcus D. Wesson household. And it's very tragic. And as a result, we see, you know, nine children were also murdered. And there's a lot that can be learned from this, you know. So I hope to see people study this in depth, really take into account why this happened, you know, and what Marcus Wesson was doing, why it doesn't do any good to give excuses and say, you know, I, I had several different concubines and no, he had nine children and he ruthlessly killed them in cold blood. And that's what people need to take away from this. There's a lot that can be learned if people are willing to look under the surface. There's some psychological cues that Wesson gave off that can really teach people a lot. But they have to be willing to be taught and they have to be willing to understand and recognize why this happens. If you got out of line and forgot, Marcus Wesson wasn't opposed to wielding a baseball bat or a crowbar to help you remember. Marcus Wesson's son, Serafino, said he endured 30 consecutive days of beatings for sneaking in peanut butter. So he'd lure some kids in with peanut butter and all the other food. That's why there's numbers of missing children to this day in Texas, kind of around the area of the David Koresh compound. There's a lot that are still missing today. So it's interesting to make note of this and really see why this happened, and hopefully 
a lot more people are going to learn much more about this and they will get to um, understand it well themselves. This is something that needs to be understood by everyone. So I appreciate, once again, any support. It's very helpful. Get the word out. Make sure everyone knows about it. Marcus Wesson kept a kind of stick wrapped in duct tape to use for punishments. The tape might have patted the stick to prevent breaking major bones, but otherwise it left welts, scars, and large blisters on every single body he came across. So very serious stuff, and um, I enjoyed sharing this. This is the serial killer story of Marcus D. Wesson. Signing off now. And abused him and his siblings. On the witness stand, Wesson's sister didn't come out and confirm it, but she did state that when their father was drinking, he was much more inclined to hug and throttle them. The children knew the best way to avoid unwanted physical affection. Benjamin was drunk and was to hide until he sobered up what he was doing. A childhood friend of Marcus Wesson's testified that Benjamin had once offered to pay him $50 in exchange for oral encounters. Wesson's father would eventually run off with a male cousin with whom he was having a affair. That incestuous affair seemed to have gone on for a decade before Marcus Wesson's father reappeared to take on his paternal duties, as if nothing happened. It is unknown just how much Wesson's mother, Carrie, knew about the abuse and incest her husband perpetrated upon all the children. Likewise, for Elizabeth, whom Wesson would marry and start a family with, she went on to deny everything and even denied knowing Wesson or touching those children along with all of the other love lovers that he was engaged in incest with. Elizabeth had walked in to find one of the girls performing oral encounters on him. She firmly denies it.